Hello guys, I wanted to use week three to talk about my first supervisor meeting and how it went and the main things that we covered um, and that we spoke of. Uh, now I have quite a good relationship with my supervisor over email contact besides um, my actual meetings with him and so my first meeting was not as scary or daunting for me as maybe for somebody who's never sort of spoken to their supervisor um, beforehand. Um, I had um, Skyped him once before in my proposal days um, and uh, I had spoken to, spoke to him over email uh, a few times before, even before my uh, PhD interview, which which was quite uh, lucky for me and quite handy. Um, so having a good uh, relationship with your supervisor is probably a key thing. And first meeting was um, about an hour and a bit long, and um, it was quite chilled out. We had a Skype meeting, although we did intend initially to meet up specifically for the vlog purposes. I thought it would be nice to have a first meeting face to face, but unfortunately, it is. Um, difficult to sort of arrange a time sometimes where I have childcare or where the supervisor can get to a place that we can both meet and stuff. For some people, um, obviously, distant learning would be a lot further um, of a you know distance, and so that's probably out of question. Anyhow, our first meeting was on Skype, and um, I'd also like to say, as I mentioned before, that it's probably uh, different for everybody. Um, the first thing that we talked about, I think, was um, the structure and um, the format of the thesis. Bearing in mind, this was sort of one of the questions that I had written down, and um, I had a particularly um, specific idea in my head of how I don't want my thesis to be, which is a bit weird. Uh, more than I know how it wanted to be so I was like I don't want to do this I don't want to do this and so we had a little bit of a chat about um, the format and the structure um, we talked a little bit about research engines uh, search engines and researching particular keywords or how I was going about starting my literature review and how I was going to arrange the themes um, we talked about uh, how often we intended to speak um, and um, how our meetings would sort of be arranged and and we also said you know we'd be honest with each other and if there was something um, I've specifically said if you think something's bad please tell me it's bad um, and a really good idea to make sure that your supervisor knows early on if you intend to do interviews and what sort they are and whether you need ethics clearance and how um, if you know your supervisor needs to help you to do that then um, it's a good idea to speak about that quite early on so um, in the first meeting, to sum it all up, my supervisor gave me a few ideas of some books to read. Um, he sort of told me that eventually I would get a voice and that I didn't need to worry so much about my academic writing at the moment and that uh, the more I wrote, obviously, the more practice, uh, the better it gets. Um, we spoke about some research methods and how often we wanted to talk and um, the structure and thought format of um, my thesis overall and the um, ethics uh, clearance and consent forms for any interviews and things like that. Um, obviously we didn't sort it all out, it's just the first meeting, but we spoke about it and we mentioned it and now he has a good idea. Um, so yeah, just a rough sort of idea or a template or a plan, something so that you both know where you're at in terms of what you want to get done for when. And also um, being a distant learner and um, being a in the first three weeks of my PhD, there are modules um, that we have to do um, as from the university that everybody has to do for um, reaching a certain standard of uh, knowledge on research methods and um, qualitative quantitative research and um, we have to um, complete these modules online uh, through the blackboard and submit them so um, so far I'm not feeling very isolated in, or very lonely in terms of um, supervisor teacher contact um, but I know this is a very big issue and one that I particularly want to, um, wanted to vlog for was to show that um, is there really a big difference in PhD level of how much support you can get um, if you're distant or if you're going in. Um, one thing I do feel uh, rather often is that um, I keep getting um, emails about events and seminars and conferences or workshops that I really wish I could attend um, and sometimes obviously because of the children or childcare or work or the routine that I have um, of school that I just simply can't go and then sometimes I do really feel like I wish I could have been there and recently I joined a um, Facebook group parents who are early researchers or academics and I am um, completely um, gutted that I thought I was something special for doing this. Many, many people are doing this and they are doing it in much 
tougher circumstances, some with younger kids, some with more kids, um, some with full-time jobs as well as um, their children and the PhD. Um, and having uh, this um, join this group, and don't get me wrong, there are probably many groups. This one in particular is very, very good. Um, I found just even some, even though I'm not actually commenting anything as much yet, but I found that um, reading that other people are going through similar things that you're going through just makes you sort of feel better and think, okay, no, if they can do it, I can do it. Or um, it is something that people do and they do get through it. If there's so many, they must be getting through it. And so it's a little bit of a motivation booster as well. And if you are a distant learner and you're a parent, then find a Facebook group or a social media group that you like, that you're happy with. Um, and I think it does help. It really does. The first three weeks have been so far really, really amazing. But this week, um, because there's been no school and it's half term, I have um, literally spent every single day out um, in I went to the farm, I went to the beach, I went to parks, I was stood in, the, in bed early and then I was working sort of, or I am working this week sort of, um, from I'd say 7 to about 10, 30, 11 until I'm just too tired to work anymore. Um, and so I'm trying this, I've been doing this routine this week. Um, as a parent, um, I would say that your routine is never going to stick to one routine or um, your perfect ideal situation of working. Um, although I did attempt to take my books um, many times through the week to either the park or somewhere, but uh, that you have a few minutes here and there, but really you don't really get that chance to work. Um, um, and there are days where you think, oh my God, I should be working. Why am I not working? But overall, I think um, if you're flexible enough to sort of be okay with changing your routine now and then, I think it's still manageable so far. <laughs> so I look forward to speaking to you next week. It's been... Uh kind of a tough week uh, for us because I was uh, uh, doing night shifts as uh, you know the requirement of my own call as a doctor uh, and because of that um, you know we've got two kids and uh, um, we have to manage things accordingly we, we did uh, to some extent uh, but there are ups and downs um, uh, but uh, she is working extremely hard on, on her project and uh, you know already tried to think of uh, 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 going to Pakistan to do some research work, uh, which is great, uh, but in that case I have to look after kids 24-7. Uh, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying our uh, uh, little uh, video vlogs on uh, on YouTube and uh, you know on, on university side, and we hope to catch up with you later again. Thank you.